The SS1 is a small, high-res, 100-watt amplifier with built-in audio streaming. It's designed to fit in a standard one-gang wall box or be easily hidden away. There are several wiring options that can be used to fit any retrofit or new installation job. This audio zone in a box can be used to add music to any room with ease. The SS1 can use TO StreamShare technology to play audio on up to six audio elements at the same time in perfect sync and fill the whole house with music. The SS1 has tons of connectivity options. It can be connected to the network with an Ethernet cable or over Wi-Fi. It can be powered directly from a PS1 power supply or from an Ethernet cable with our TPOE adapter. The audio output on the SS1 uses a 3.5 millimeter connector and allows you to connect the audio element to a more powerful amplifier for use in large spaces. It even has an optical audio input, giving you the ability to connect a TV or CD player to your TO audio system. The SS1 is also capable of running in standalone mode without an MC. Simply connect up to six SS1s directly to your home network with an Ethernet cable and away you go. You can also use Wi-Fi with a standalone SS1 by entering your credentials in the app. The TS7 is a high-end in-wall Android touchscreen with the same high-quality amplifier that's found in the SS1. The TS7 can be installed in any space to give always-on access to any part of the system. Like the SS1, the TS7 can use TO StreamShare technology to play audio on up to six audio elements at the same time and fill the whole house with music. The TS7 can be connected to the network with either a CAT5 or CAT6 Ethernet cable or connect to the system wirelessly to the 2.4 GHz wireless N network created by the MC. The SS1 and TS7 can be powered from the PS1 power supply or from a PC1 TPOE adapter, giving maximum flexibility to the installer. Both the SS1 and the TS7 can be used to replace existing volume controls without pulling any new wires. Standard volume controls run 16-4 speaker cable from the amplifier to the volume control, and then 16-4 speaker cable from the volume control to the speakers. Start by powering off the old amplifier and pairing the new audio element to the system as described in the System Setup Pairing video. Now, remove the old volume control and connect the speakers to the speaker output on the back of the element. In many cases, you'll be able to use the existing connector. If the old connector doesn't fit, use the supplied Phoenix connector. Next, connect two of the 16 gauge wires from the old amplifier to the power input on the element using the supplied Phoenix connector and finish installing it in the wall. In the location with the old amplifier, find the two wires you used for the power. Connect a PS1 power supply to these two wires. Make sure to match up the positive and negative wires. Both the SS1 and the TS7 can be used to replace existing keypad volume controls without pulling any new wires. Keypad volume controls run 16-4 speaker cable and Ethernet cable from the main unit to the keypad, and then 16-4 speaker cable from the keypad to the speakers. Start by powering off the old amplifier. Now, remove the old keypad and connect the speakers to the speaker output on the back of the element. In many cases, you'll be able to use the existing connector. If the old connector doesn't fit, use the supplied Phoenix connector. Next, connect the two 16-gauge wires from the old main unit to the power input on the element using the supplied Phoenix connector. Terminate the old category cable with an RJ45 to be able to plug into the back of the element and finish installing. In the location with the old main unit, find the two wires you used for the power. Connect a PS1 power supply to these two wires. Make sure to match up the positive and negative wires. Finally, make sure the Ethernet cable is connected to the TO system through one of the yellow ports on the MC or through a gigabit switch connected to one of the yellow ports on the MC. Both the SS1 and the TS7 can be used to replace existing A-Bus or NetStream systems without pulling any new wires by using a PC1 power coupler. A-Bus and NetStreams run an Ethernet cable from the main unit to the keypad and 16-4 speaker cable to the speakers. 
Start by powering off the old main unit. Now, remove the old keypad and connect the speakers to the speaker output on the back of the element. In many cases, you'll be able to use the existing connector. If the old connector doesn't fit, use the supplied Phoenix connector. Terminate the old category cable with an RJ45 to be able to plug into the back of the element and finish installing. In the location with the old main unit, find the Ethernet cable you used. Connect this Ethernet cable to the Ethernet out side of the PC1. Connect a PS1 power supply to the 24 volt input on the PC1 and connect the Ethernet in port of the PC1 with an Ethernet cable to one of the yellow ports on the MC or through a gigabit switch connected to one of the yellow ports on the MC. The SS1 can be installed in several different ways, giving you maximum flexibility. In the box, you'll find an in-wall mounting plate and screws for installation in a one-gang wall ring, and a set of four non-marking rubber feet if you'd like to put the SS1 somewhere else. To install the SS1 in a wall ring, Start by attaching the in-wall mounting plate to the front of the SS1 using the small screws that were included. Connect all necessary wires to the SS1 and slide the SS1 into the wall ring. Use the included screws to attach the in-wall mounting plate to the wall ring. You can now either cover the SS1 with a standard wall plate to hide it completely or use a volume control wall plate to leave the status LED exposed. You can also use the included rubber feet and place the SS1 behind your speakers or on a bookshelf. The TS7 is designed to install in a standard one-gang wall ring. If the TS7 will be using the Wi-Fi to connect, make sure to pair the TS7 with the system by connecting it to the MC, as mentioned during the setup video. To begin, remove the included adapter plate from the box and attach it to the wall ring with the included screws. Make sure to attach the wall ring with the bump facing away from the wall and towards the ground. This bump is used by the TS7 set screw, which is pre-installed in the screen to help lock it in. If the TS7 is being installed in a wall that is uneven or textured, we recommend attaching the supplied rubber adhesive pads to the back of the TS7. One adhesive pad in each of the four corners will help prevent the TS7 from moving during use. Connect all necessary wires to the TS7. Prior to attaching the connector to the speaker wires, loop all four leads through the solid core ferret twice. Prior to attaching the connector to the power cable, loop the cable through the solid core twice. Prior to plugging in the ethernet cable, loop the wire around the split core ferret twice and snap the ferret closed. After connecting all the wires, slide the TS7 into the wall ring. Carefully press on the middle of the touchscreen until you hear the 3M dual lock click into place. If desired, tighten the set screw on the bottom to lock the TS7 into the wall.